This is the Saudi Arabian Line project, known as Neom Future City. This mega project will be seen for the first time in the world in the upcoming years. Not only is it immense, but Neom is also the most expensive construction project globally. In this project, constructed for $500 billion, two parallel skyscrapers of 500 meters each are being built, astonishingly spreading across 170 kilometers in the desert of Saudi Arabia. It's envisioned as a city where 9 million people could reside within its glass confines. But is such a concept feasible? What are the advantages and disadvantages compared to its organic cities? Is Saudi Arabia risking everything to salvage its declining economy by heavily investing in this endeavor? And if for any reason this NEOM project fails, what will Saudi Arabia have left behind? With the pace at which the world's population is growing, futuristic cities like NEOM could play a significant role. Because in these, more people can be accommodated with significantly fewer resources than organic cities. Such setups are termed as linear cities. In a linear city, due to everything being planned, there is minimal loss of resources, leading to reduced operating costs. To put it into perspective, the population of Mexico City is comparable to Neom's proposed population. However, if all roads in Mexico City are expanded, including main roads, streets, and expressways, the total roads built there would exceed 300,000 kilometers. In Neom's linear city design, the top layer is reserved for pedestrians, where no vehicles will operate. The second layer is designated as the service layer, where both cars will run and shops will be situated. And the third span will have the network for a high-speed train using fully artificial intelligence. This entire 170 kilometers will be traversable by this high-speed train in just 20 minutes. These 20 minutes are often wasted waiting at traffic signals during travel in any metropolitan city's metro system. So, the question arises, if there are so many advantages to linear cities, then why aren't other projects like Neom being constructed elsewhere in the world? The reality is that the idea of linear cities is quite old and had been implemented before, but it didn't function as anticipated. In the 19th century, a planned line city was constructed in a district of Madrid known as the Seviciad Lineal. Its width was 400 meters, doubled of Neom, and stretched for 50 kilometers. However, only 5 kilometers were constructed. The idea was that over time, additional sectors would be added, extending its length. But upon ground inspection, you'd be surprised to know that locating this line city in Madrid today is quite challenging. Everywhere in the world, cities and towns tend to naturally cluster. People settle in places based on their requirements, and the city then expands around that point. In contrast, this option isn't available in linear cities. Everyone has to abide by the same pattern. They tend to be elongated, causing considerable distance among people. Madrid's line city also experienced something similar. It couldn't fulfill people's requirements entirely, which led to its stagnation rather than progression. Despite the numerous advantages of linear cities, they primarily benefit governments. They are easier to operate and incur lower expenses. However, humans are bound by it, and despite the length of linear cities, the outside world remains dependent. Daily life necessities come from outside, and it's evident that all the supplies for Line City enter and exit through its designated entry and exit points. Consequently, new organic cities begin to emerge at these entry and exit points, gradually disrupting the original linear structure. Apart from Madrid, proposals for linear cities were made in several other countries as well. However, they either never reached completion or the projects were cancelled before construction. So now the question arises, why did Saudi Arabia invest $500 billion in the NEOM project, knowing all this? Saudi Arabia has utilized its oil earnings to such an extent that now challenges are emerging for them. The Saudi economy, heavily dependent on oil, is facing difficulties due to the present 95% oil-driven economy. It is believed that to overcome this dependence and diversify the Saudi economy into tourism and technology, Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman has taken this step. Saudi Arabia's main source of income is Saudi Aramco, with a total valuation of $2 trillion, generating an annual profit of around $120 billion, nearly $70 billion of which are utilized in the country's expenditures as per the budget. About $50 billion are left, which means if this profit remains consistent, 
Saudi Arabia can bear the expenditure of NEOM's $500 billion in the next 10 years. If, for any reason, this project fails, Saudi Arabia will not have the time to seek alternative income resources to divert its economy. What are your thoughts on this? Please share in the comments section. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like and subscribe to Wonderful Stories. Thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next amazing video.